This is the Fifth Estate Winning Headlines, your Media Police Post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning, but we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 30th of September 2021, and I am 2J. I'm um, Tuo. And I am GK. In case you missed the headlines, here they are. In the Daily Nation, Uhuru cuts Ruto power in reshuffle. In the Standard, power at play in surprise cabinet reshuffle. And in the Star, Uhuru plans to corner one Kenya Alliance chiefs to back Raila. And in the People Daily, Ruto men lose say in cabinet reorganization. Mm. So make big news uh, that, that shuffle. Yeah. So today, I want us to engage in a bit of critical thinking, mm. because we now know that politics is both about speed and terrain. Mm -hmm. And JP Morgan once told us that a man always has two reasons for doing anything, a good reason and the real reason. Mm. <laughs> so the surprise reshuffle came at last, and so did Uhuru's apparent <laughs> endorsement of Raila. Mm. But what is the real reason behind Uhuru's actions? Concerning the cabinet reshuffle, when it comes to speed, some would argue that Uhuru has been slow to act. Some might even say this action is too little, too late. Mm. But in fact, in Machiavelli's uh, famous advice to the prince, he says that it is important to deal with developing um, political problems early rather than wait until it is too late because wars can never be avoided, only postponed. Mm. Now, Uhuru is acutely aware that the war for succession is ongoing, mm. but his timing is actually calculated in this case and yes. well choreographed. Mm. So it is not a coincidence that a DP ally was moved from being the CS of energy on the same day that the president receives a report from the presidential task force that he constituted from as far back as March 2021 to review power purchase agreements. Mm -hmm. A consumer currently paying 500 shillings will by December of this year be paying only 330 shillings. Mm. You will go from paying 24 shillings per kilowatt mm. to 16 shillings. Mm. Somebody say Hustler Cartel. <laughs> Hustler Cartel. Now, reading between the lines, the exposition of Hustler Cartels is just a beginning. Mm. Mm. So about the Raila endorsement. Mm. The consideration here that Uhuru must be making mm. is that terrain of 2022 has changed. Yep. Mm. He's probably aware that Raila needs a new idea to sell him. <laughs> Especially if the new voter base has no grasp of history. Mm. They don't know about Jaramogi, the mm -hmm. history of all those things. Mm. So how will he persuade them? Or does he even need to? Mm. We often say at this table that whoever wins the election will have been handpicked by the real selectorate, mm. a.k.a. the influentials. Mm. Yeah. In China and the old Soviet Union, yeah. this meant voting members of the Communist Party. In Saudi Arabia, this group comprises of senior members of the royal family. Mm. This is a group that has real influence over the outcome. Mm. Now, I have a hunch. Uhuru, a master of timing, has not really unveiled the real <laughs> selectorate yet. Yeah. Mm. But Kenyans are curious. So can they please tell us already <laughs> who it's going to be? You know, you know GK, I, I really like the part on... on the minister who was moved from energy. Mm -hmm. I just wonder where he went. Uh, is it Ministry of, of Dry Spell? Of Dry Spell, of devolution. <laughs> but they removed the most essential bits away from devolution, yeah. interestingly, in some of those changes. Mm -hmm. So allow us to uh, take you into the headspace of the president and demystify some of these recent actions that we're talking about. Yes, as GK said, he may be moving slowly from our point of view. But in order to understand Uhuru Kenyatta, we must search for meaning in his actions. Mm. And in order to do this, we must call upon the law of unrelated things. Correct. Because the president is orchestrating a web that has been engineered to catch a wolf. Mm. There are three seemingly unrelated, un sorry, unrelated events mm. that I want to touch on. Correct. Number one is executive order number one of 2019. Right. This is the order that created the committee to ensure the implementation of government projects. It's also the executive order that made Matiangi super CS. Yes. But beyond increasing the scope of Matiangi's job, it also isolated William Ruto. Mm -hmm. But the question is why? Mm. In my view, if you have no access to ongoing development projects, you can't pre-organize a tender for your wife, your son, or your sister. Ooh. <laughs> you just ask the people of West Pokot, what happened to the Camarini Stadium and who promised to upgrade it for them? <laughs> Development projects promised to the people of Kenya had become this honeypot for some people to dig into. This executive order simply tightened the tap. Yes. Number two, mm. in January 2020, 
the president restructured KTDA. Mm. This was because tea farmers were being denied their fair share of pay for their product. Correct. Investigations showed that farmers who should be earning 91 shillings per kilogram were instead receiving 41 shillings, with 50 shillings going to middlemen. Mm -hmm. Who are these middlemen? Mm. Yeah. GK, <laughs> is this the hustler cartel at work? I love, it. Like a <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Again, this was another tap identified by the president that needed to be dealt with. Yes. And three, yesterday's mini cabinet shuffle. Mm. Pay attention to who was moved, where they moved to, mm. and the people who lost power and gained it. Yes. If Kenyans, as GK told us, are paying 24 shillings per kilowatt instead of 16 shillings, where is that eight shillings going? Mm. <laughs> and on whose watch? Yes. Mm. It is no secret who the president is trying to strip of influence and access to cash. <laughs> It is so declassified. <laughs> this is the same reason for NMS under General Body, the changes at Kenya Pipeline, digitizing the Ministry of Lands, and selecting no-nonsense cabinet secretaries in the most lucrative ministries. Yeah. The president is identifying all of the taps where corruption is taking place, removing the enabler and tightening the lid. Yeah. Hey. Question is, where is the next open tap located? Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> but this, by, I mean, December, there'll be no running water in current. Goodbye, Hustler Cartel. Today, like all Thursdays, I will address my fellow Kikuyus. Mm -hmm. Kikuyus, Martin Luther King once said, we are not makers of history. We are made by history. Mm. But before I tell you why I'm talking about history, allow me to tell you a story. Once upon a time, a scorpion asked a frog to help it cross the river. Mm. The frog was hesitant, but because it was good-natured, it finally agreed. However, the frog gave a single condition to the scorpion. It promised to carry the scorpion so long as the scorpion did not sting it. Mm. You see, the scorpion had a history of stinging other animals. But this time, the scorpion came with a Bible, mm. singing Buana Asifiwe, <laughs> and so it would never sting the frog. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And so the two started crossing the river. But midstream, the scorpion could not control its urges. Yeah. It stung, stung, and stung the, the <laughs> trusting frog. Before the frog died, it asked the scorpion, why did you do it? And the scorpion replied, I could not help myself. Mm. It is just in my nature. Yeah. You should have known my history. Okay. What's the point of my story? Kikuyus have allowed a Bible-wielding, Bona Asifiwe chanting <laughs> scorpion into their fold. They have forgotten the history of the man they now regard as their savior. Mm -hmm. They have forgotten to ask themselves, if William Ruto has a history of stinging Kikuyus, why trust him? Mm. But more importantly, if Ruto's history with Kikuyus is filled with blood, mm -hmm. why is he confusing them with bottoms up? Yeah. The answer is simple. William Ruto knows he cannot discuss history with Kikuyus because he has been accused in a court of law of killing them, period. Mm -hmm. And therefore, to you Kikuyus, wisen up. Just like the colonizers fooled you with the Bible mm -hmm. and lost and you lost your land, you will lose everything because you trusted the Buona Asifiwe chanting scorpion, simply because you forgot your history. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Such a good point. Do not forget your history. Mm -hmm. So we have a three-part criteria that we're going to use to break down or judge the headlines, sorry. We ask ourselves, is it topical or speculative? Is it repetitive or groundbreaking? Is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? Mm -hmm. uh, I like that picture. The pic yeah, oh, so we can have a winning picture, new category. Absolutely. Uh, the star um, showed us the progress that the Nairobi Expressway is, it has made uh, yes. in such a short time yeah. Yeah. Uh, to be completed by the end of the year, to be opened next year for mm -hmm. Kenyans to, to ride on. You no, know, I thought yeah. that was Dubai. <laughs> right? Yes, it, yeah, was no, Dubai. very impressive. I think it's so interesting for people to find Finally, kind of see what's been happening yeah. above them, yes. you know, Absol in the roads of Nairobi. Absolutely. Bona Sifue, we have a winning picture. <laughs> um, can we also pick a winning uh, headline? Mm -hmm. uh, preferably the Daily Nation. I agree. Yes? There you have it. And now, fun thought. It is inspired by a book entitled Belarus, The Last European Dictatorship by Andrew Wilson. Mm -hmm. So, Alexander Lukashenko mm. is the president of Belarus and has been for almost 30 years. He has described himself as the last and only dictator in Europe. That is self-declared. <laughs> and that's where the title of the book comes from. So, Lukashenko won the country's first free and fair election in 1994. 
and this was just three years after the fall of the Soviet Union. He vowed to tax the rich and end corruption, and it sounded great to the people, and he was genuinely popular at the time. Mm. But one former aide, who turned into a critic, used the following to describe Lukashenko at the beginning of his time in power. And he said, at his rallies, you would have thousands of people who were listening to him. Instead of leaving the stadium, they would move towards him like an avalanche. Mm. Mm. They were reaching out to him like believers to a relic, praying for God's grace. <laughs> Women were lifting their children to Lukashenko for him to touch them. Others were reaching out with books, newspapers, or even banknotes just to get an autograph. Mm. But for all of Lukashenko's common man bravado, his promises to combat corruption <laughs> quickly fell apart just five months <laughs> into his presidency. Mm. A deputy compiled an investigation into corruption in parliament, which was said to contain charges against various high-ranking officials. But the government banned all coverage of this by the press. And that was just the beginning of a decades-long assault on the media. Mm. Shortly afterwards, Lukashenko replaced the editors-in-chief of four leading newspapers and took the national radio and television under strict control, creating an environment so hostile to independent journalism that Belarus is now considered the most dangerous country in Europe for members of the media. Mm. And the more control Lukashenko exerted, the pettier the details became. For example, the media are not allowed to film the back of his head <laughs> because of a bald spot showing in his hair. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, it seems that Lukashenko operates from this standard authoritarian playbook. Yes. And he's repeatedly worked to codify his power using a referendum in 1996 to extend his first term mm. and then using a second referendum to completely remove term limits in 2004. Wow. <laughs> the EU, US, UK and Canada have all imposed sanctions on Belarus, targeting every, everything from his close associates to the Belarusian economy. But the truth is that sanctions can only do so much. Yeah. And Lukashenko does not seem keen to end his reign. Mm. In fact, many people think that he's grooming his youngest son to take his place. Although he denies that all the time. I know, all the he time. He says that they've had their fair share of the president. <laughs> <laughs> Once you have power, I don't know if people want to let go of it. Like I, I, I love this guy. Do you think his second name should be Kaguta? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I love the chapter on political technology, uh, which is what short for manipulating election processes to favor you. Mm. See, Lukashenko is a living legend. <laughs> Even when he's sure he's going to win an election, he wants to win it by a large margin. Mm. <laughs> and so in the September 2001 Belarus presidential elections, Lukashenko was set to win by 30 to 35 percent. Mm. But when the elections were uh, done, Lukashenko had an additional 20 percent <laughs> to his total vote. How did he do it? Yeah. Months the election, Lukashenko sponsored centrist candidates. Mm. He supported like four of them. Then just before the election, he made them withdraw their candidature, then forced them to support him. Mm. Their collective support amounted to about 20%. Mm -hmm. He then forced the version of IBC to increase turnout from 74% to 84%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> by the time the election was done, Lukashenko had won by 57% of the total vote. Oh, okay. It was a clever swindle. However, the West and the opposition realized what Lukashenko had done. Mm. They went raving mad and called for nationwide protests. Yeah. Lukashenko, to prevent the protest calls from getting louder, he switched off all their mobile phones and internet communications. <laughs> for like three days, only 2,000 people had showed up in October Square in Minsk to protest. Mm. It was underwhelming. It wasn't the Yugoslav revolution they were looking for. Mm. To make it worse for them, the September 11th Twin Tower attacks had just happened before the uh, protests could get momentum. Mm. The story was over. Mm -hmm. America and Bin Laden had the world's attention. Lukashenko survived. Wow. Now, we always say that Salva Kiir and Yuri Museveni attended the Moy School of Politics. Mm -hmm. I'd like to propose a third <laughs> head of state to this list, <laughs> Alexander Lukashenko. Wow. <laughs> I like that, <laughs> to the Moy School of Politics. Mm -hmm. So not all things are bad in Belarus. Yeah. Um, and I want to talk a bit about the economy. Most people would think that under this authoritarian dictatorship uh, that things had become worse. Yeah. But in fact, Belarus is the 72nd largest economy in the world. Mm -hmm. It has one of the lowest poverty rates in Europe. 
And Belarus is often described as having the last sort of Soviet era economy, mm. yeah. a strong state owned in an industrial and agricultural sector. Um, and this has allowed the country to actually eradicate poverty. Mm -hmm. yeah. So according to World Bank figures, uh, between two the year 2000 and 2013, yeah. poverty rates fell from 60% to less than 1%, compared wow. with an average of 14% in Europe and Central Asia. Whoa. So it may not be wealthy, yeah. um, but in it, the, the only thing that they struggle with here is the income inequality in, um, in, in Belarus, but it's mm -hmm. also lower than their counterparts, which yes. I think is a step in the right direction, especially lower than those in Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, what's also interesting is this reliance they have, this love-hate, the relationship that they have with Russia. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the uh, when he took power in 94, I think, mm. beginning in 1995, Lukashenko tried to pursue a union with Russia. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was one of the people who didn't want to leave the yeah, Soviet. Yeah, he opposed it. Yeah. 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 So they formed this sort of Russia-Belarus union mm. that ensured the preferred um, preferred economic um, relationship between Russia and Belarus. Belarus. Mm. And so at the heart of this economic relationship with Moscow is this huge energy subsidy. Yeah. So that um, a lot of the oil, um, so that they get preferential rates for Russian crude oil, yeah. the low market prices, yeah. and then it's refined and sold internationally. Yeah. And then a similar deal also exists for natural gas, mm. which is delivered throughout the, uh, the, 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 the region. The region. Sorry. Yeah. So Putin has since ordered mm. the, slow, the arrangement to be slowly phased out by 2024. Yes. But this is a bargaining chip for Minsk um, to, to force him into this political and economic union. Mm. Whoever comes after Lukashenko has to take care of this Russian-Belarus economic <coughs> relationship. Yeah. And that's why he has stayed for so long. Yeah. Mm. So it's said that he has um, gifted Putin with bags of potato and yeah. tons of lard for yeah. Christmas. I he's a it. very absurd sort of character, mm. but yeah. he's also managed to keep uh, Belarus stable yeah. and that relationship going on. Yeah. So the threat of losing $13 billion in annual ex oil export revenues wow. is yeah. what is a huge carrot um, for any new government that comes in after mm -hmm. Lukashenko and they have to take care of that. Yeah. Um, so it's an interesting one. The geopolitics of that area, yeah. the reliance, but also Lukashenko is such a huge believer in the people of Belarus and how important their independence is. And mm -hmm. he says that if the economy is thriving, then we can maintain our own sort of independence. And that's what he says he's been pushing for. Mm -hmm. I like this guy. So one time, <laughs> uh, there's a weird story. Yeah. He once ordered the arrest of about 400 people in 2011. <laughs> I think that same protest that uh, Tuam was talking about. Yeah. But among them, he arrested one guy, a one armed man was charged with taking part in the clapping protest. <laughs> and a mute person was accused of shouting <laughs> anti-government <laughs> slogans, guys. That's Lukashenko for you. So I wanna end with this. We had a winning picture <laughs> from the start. And a winning headline from the Daily Nation. So, see how he says. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let me give you a quote from Machiavelli. Let's, let's try and end on a serious note. The lesson for any future successor is that power is a scarce resource to be energet energetically collected and carefully guarded. Giving power to another takes power from yourself. This then disqualifies ideas of cooperation or shared responsibility. So that from the very beginning, someone like Uhuru Kenyatta should have known that the deputy is just a deputy. Mm -hmm. Your deputy is never your equal. Mm. Absolutely. Have, have a lovely... A round of applause. Oh, close to, close to the weekend. It's not the weekend. I'm already in the weekend. <laughs> Have a lovely evening. And a special shout out to our viewers in the diaspora. There oh, yes, go, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, find us on TV, and go to me, Pankita, and start in. Don't clap. Yeah. God bless.